Greetings, friends. I want to share with you some thoughts from the Word of God, and particularly I want to go to Matthew chapter 8. Uh, there are many, many passages throughout the Old and New Testament about God's healing power, but there's a collection of verses in Matthew chapter 8 which really speak to my heart, and I want to talk about those over the next few uh, teachings because I, I want you to glean from them for your understanding that our God is, is never changed. With Him, all things are possible even at curing the incurable diseases. Now, the first little narrative from the uh, first part of Matthew chapter 8 has to do with leprosy. Has to do with leprosy. Now, I've prayed for many lepers uh, in Bombasa, Kenya, in, in India, in, in China. In fact, there's a picture of me praying for a, a man in a leper colony in India. There's about 50,000 leper colonies. And I have a friend there that has about 50 of these covered with churches, 50 out of 50,000. But there's churches in there, and, and people with leprosy are isolated. Now, the first time I prayed for a leper in, in Mombasa, Kenya, I came back and I asked my doctor, and he said, look, it's not really contagious. It's a skin disease, and, you know, over prolonged exposure, uh, you may uh, and, uh, contract that disease. But for the most part, you know, you don't. And so I remember that, and, and I was concerned because I was in Mombasa doing a, a meeting in a women's uh, center with rivers. And that was the first time we prayed for somebody with leprosy. So I've, I put a picture here of a young person I prayed for in India in this uh, one particular mission uh, for leprosy. And I don't know what God did there because I, I, I certainly moved on. But I know with our God, all things are possible, that he can cure even incurable diseases. So the text I want to read you is from uh, Matthew chapter 8, beginning with verse 1. When Jesus came down from the mountainside, large crowds followed him. And a man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. If you're willing, you can make me clean. And Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. And he said, I am willing. He said, be clean. And immediately he was cleansed of, of the leprosy. And then Jesus said to him, see that you don't tell anyone, but go and show yourself to the priest and offer the gift Moses commanded as a testimony uh, to them. Now, I want you to understand two things about this story. This leper was completely isolated from, from his community, from his family. As, as one with leprosy, he couldn't associate with anyone. It not only cut him off from community uh, because he had this disease of leprosy, leprosy, his family, but he couldn't go get a job. He couldn't work for anyone because he was seen as unclean, incurable. Lost his family, no, no chance to, uh, to uh, work, and he, he was also a beggar. You know, there was no social welfare system in that time that covered the needs of people like this. So he was completely on his own. You know, later got, Jesus heals a, a number of 12 lepers. We know, we know that story. But in this particular case, this leper comes to him and says, will, will you heal me? And Jesus said, yes, I'm willing. Now, what that says to me about Jesus is that he was compassionate and when the sick and the, and the lame and the cripples and the demon-possessed came to him, he reached out and restored them. Nowhere in the Bible can I find a place where Jesus said, no, I will not do that. He was a, a presence of compassion, demonstrating the power of God uh, in his life and also to identify Jesus as the long-awaited Jewish Messiah, revealed in power. You know, in the Old Testament, there were only two people that I know of that were healed of leprosy. One was Moses' sister, Miriam, and we find her healed of leprosy, I think, in uh, Numbers chapter 12. And then in 2 Kings uh, 5, we find a general, a, a, a pagan, a um, Gentile general named Naaman, who was healed of leprosy. But in the Old Testament, Miriam, the, the, the sister of Moses, and Naaman, the general, were healed but not until the time of Jesus, when he comes in. Now, what's interesting is that he tells the man to go and do what Moses required, go make a couple of offerings uh, to the priest. Why? So they can certify the fact that you're healed. So he gave them these, uh, these gifts to, and, and they certified him, a certificate of healing. And that was important because he could not be reinstated to his family or go get a job. Or, or do anything until he got a certificate from the community, from the priest, saying that he was cleansed. Now that was a miracle. How many priests do you think saw people heal of leprosy in the time of Jesus? I don't think many, up until 
Jesus comes on the scene. And, and what do we learn from Jesus in this? Well, first we learn that he was indeed who he said he was, a long way to Jewish Messiah, the Son of God, demonstrating his power through signs and wonders and miracles. And people were flocking to him in droves. And, and I'm going to talk more about that uh, a little going forward. But he also restored this man, healed this man, gave this man his life back. So his family back. So he could get a job and, and, and raise him and take care of himself. You see, the, the compassion of Jesus was not just in healing him of leprosy, but gave him his life back. And I want you to remember this. Go read these first few verses of Matthew chapter 8. Ponder this story uh, about the healing of this man with leprosy and understand it wasn't just Jesus showing who he was, but giving this man his life, his dignity, his stature, everything back that he had lost. Now, it's not for you or me to determine why God does what he does. I don't know why God does what he does, why this man had leprosy. We, we live in a fallen world. We live in a broken world where disease uh, and illness come upon us. But we can see in this narrative, too, that God is a God of compassion and restoration. And when people come to him and say, are you willing? God says, hey, I am willing. It goes back to the James chapter 4 passage. You know, draw near to the Lord and he will draw near to you. Food for thought. Food for thought. All right. Look, if you want to reach out to me and share your thoughts, hit the comment button right now on Facebook. I'll get back to you. If you want to send a, uh, an email, a prayer request, go to paulteskyministries.com, hit the prayer button. I will get back. I answer all of them. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm growing my YouTube page, Paul Teske Ministries, with teachings and, and testimonies and for you uh, to benefit you. So go to my YouTube page at Paul Teske Ministries and, and check out. I'm using, I'm do, using these talks to, to enhance and build up people uh, in their faith walk, all right? So I'm here for you. I'm doing this for you because I care about you. I want you to go in peace now and serve the Lord. And all God's people said, amen.